I know I'm cutting off the top of my head, but that's okay, because that's not what you're supposed to be looking at. You're supposed to be looking over here at the stove. So concentrate on what I'm showing you, not beautiful me. When's the last time you had potato soup? Now, I mean really good potato soup. Well, I can tell you, I've had it out in restaurants, but I'm guessing it's probably been 20 years since I've made my own potato soup. Used to make it all the time. But I got away from it and it's just one of those things, you know, slides by and you just never do it anymore. So yesterday I came in the kitchen and I said, oh gosh, what am I going to eat? I don't want to have to cook something. I looked over and I saw a bag of red potatoes. I already knew I had a bag of uh, fingerlings that I'd put in the fridge. And there in a waste basket was another big bag of russet potatoes. Now, how many potatoes does one person need? Okay, I decided I ne needed to make use of some of those potatoes or they were going to be going to the garbage. So I reached for the russets. Now, I always loved Idaho potatoes because actually they were the best when it came to making mashed potatoes because they just fluffed up really good. But I can't find Idaho potatoes anymore, so I settled for the russets. But I think I'll make some potato soup. Do I even remember how? Okay, we'll, we'll find out. I'm not going to lose anything but a few potatoes if I mess up. So, I got out five medium-sized potatoes, looked them over, washed them off good, scrubbed them, dried them, and then I started wrapping them in aluminum foil. I already had my oven on to about four, four, 400 or 425, whatever. Uh, my little numbers are hidden nowadays, and I don't know what the numbers are. I just look at the little red marks that I put on my knob and hope I've got the right one. So anyway, I'm going to make potato soup. Well, I put the potatoes in the oven, all wrapped up in their aluminum foil, and I get to thinking, I don't even know if I've got any milk. You got to have milk. Well, I got to searching around and I thought, no, I can't, I can't use chicken broth and beef broth and whatever broth. That won't work. I've got to have milk. I found a quart. Found a quart, half and half. That'll do. So, I also had some 2% milk. I can mix them. Either one will work. Okay, I'm baking my potatoes and I'm thinking, I love what they call baked potato soup. And I love bacon in it. I knew I had bacon because I cleaned out this freezer one day and there were four packages in there. Yeah, well, better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. So I pulled one of them out and I thought, well, I don't need a whole pound. I got my electric knife out, one I picked up in the yard sale about 30 years ago. Somebody got rid of it and I've made good use of it ever since. So I got the electric knife hooked up. And I thought, now I don't know if I can cut half of this bacon or not, but I'm gonna try. So had my cutting board ready and I opened up the bacon and I started cutting crosswise, little at a time. And I 
just cutting off one end. I cut off about two inches, two, two and a half inches. That's all I was gonna need for my potato soup. The rest I could put back in the freezer. So, of course, while, uh, <clears throat> while my uh, potatoes were in the oven baking, I'll go ahead and fry my bacon. Bacon doesn't have the amount of grease anymore like it used to have. You used to get a lot of good grease. But it was it was enough. It was gonna be enough because I also like the grease from the bacon in my potato soup. I wanna be able to taste it. So I went ahead and I fried my bacon. I pulled it out, put it in the dish. Now, I'm gonna show you what I use to make my potato soup. Start out with, I had five potatoes, but I only used four. Got the potatoes going. Now I'm going to uh, fry my bacon. Here's my bacon, you see it? I crumbled it up so that I could, it would spread throughout my soup. There's my bacon. I saved the grease from the bacon, which is just about two and a half tablespoons. That's all there. I let the uh, potatoes bake. Oh, I know. If I want more volume, I'll add a can of cream chicken soup. I've never done that before, but we're going to find out what happens. Now, this looks so little. It's the average size nowadays, it says it's eight and a half ounces. I, I kind of doubt that. It's so tiny. So there's my cream of chicken soup. That's going to go in my soup. The next thing, oh uh, yeah, onion. Onion goes in about anything that's got a vegetable to it. I just cut up half an onion, chopped it up small. I don't like big chunky things. So there I've got my onion, my bacon, my bacon grease, and my cream of chicken soup. Now, are you following me? Are you writing these things down? The next thing get my big red pot out. That's what I'm going to put the soup in. So I need, I'll need a roux. So I'm having to wait till the potatoes bake first. And when they baked, they come out of the oven looking like this, you know. So I let them set a few minutes so they're easier for me to handle, not so hot. And what I do is I start squeezing, squeezing that potato. And that mashes it up good. So when I get through, I'm gonna try this. This doesn't look pretty because this is one left over from yesterday and they're not quite as white as they should be when they've set overnight. But anyway, just so that you could see, it's mashed up good and it's ready to go in the pot whenever I get my roux done. So in a bowl, I break up my potatoes, peel all the, get all the peeling off. You want to get that peeling off good. And it comes off real easy. So, okay, there I've got four potatoes in a bowl, ready for the pot. Let's get out a oh, half cup of flour and a stick of butter. Now, this is a little half stick butter dish and I had to cut it in two so it would fit. But that's a stick of butter. That's what you call a half cup also. 
So I've got the flour and the butter. They're ready to go into my pot. And I melt the butter first once I get it melted. Now this is something you can do if you wanna do it this way. You can go ahead and put your chopped onions in with the butter and let them simmer until they get translucent. Don't let them brown. You don't want your butter to brown either. And you take out, uh, well, you don't take out anything. You just, it just takes two or three minutes to uh, stir up the onions in the butter. You can do it that way or you can wait and put your onions into the whole pot. So you stir and you stir until you get it looking very smooth, like a very smooth gravy, and it's ready for the milk. Now I'm suggesting that you warm your milk a little bit before you pour it into the pot because you don't want your milk to clabber. And just pour it in a little at a time and keep stirring. Keep stirring and stirring and stirring till it's smooth. Once it's smooth and you've got it on a low burner because it will stick and you've got to keep stirring it. I'm trying to remember if I'm leaving anything out here because I just did this yesterday. So I have added the flour to the melted butter. I have stirred it till it had looked like a, a nice smooth gravy. Now I'm pouring the milk in a little at a time. Stir, add more milk, stir, keep stirring. Well, since I only had a quart of milk, that's all I could use and I wasn't sure it was going to be enough. So after I did that, I, um, what did I do next? I put my cream of chicken soup in, emptied the can, blended it in with the potatoes. Now the potatoes have been mashed up. Now if you want them smooth and you don't want the chunks, Get your potato masher out and mash them up a little bit more. But I like a few chunks in mine, not big ones, just little ones. I just, you just know the potatoes are there. So anyway, I've added my cream of chicken soup. Oh, okay. It's looking good. Now I can put my bacon in. Now, I'm never sure about bacon. Sometimes bacon comes out kind of the fatty, fatty part. But this, this bacon crumbled up good. I fried it and drained the grease off. So here's what I've got. You know what? It's better than buying the little packages. Somehow I don't feel like that, that's real bacon when I buy that. I'd rather fry my own. So this is what I've got. And it's probably a, a fourth of a cup. But you can use as much or as little as you want. Just depends on how well you like bacon. I've added that. I want more of the bacon taste. Of course, along the way, we've added salt and pepper. You know how to do that. You do that according to taste. It doesn't take much. But I added one dash of red pepper. I thought it might just give it a little oomph. So just one good dash of red pepper. And that's all I put. There are no other spices. Here is my bacon grease. It's just a little bit. Not much. I pour that right into my soup. And I stir. And I stir. And I stir. 
Now, when I get through, this is what I've got. And I'm going to have to get the camera where you can see it. If I can do it. So it'll wiggle a little, but you just bear with me. We're, I want you to see what it looked like in the pot. If I can find the pot now. Oh, there it is. There's the pot. Got a few shadows there, but you can see it nice and whitish. Not real white. More like chicken gravy color it is. Because I... I don't even like dark chicken gravy. So this is what you've got, my good potato soup. And you can see, you can see those little lumps of potatoes. And the rest is all blended in. You can see little pieces of bacon. See, there's a little lump of potato there. So you can have it the consistency you want it to be. And I was so surprised when I sat down last night to eat my potato soup. I ate it with crackers. Now here's something that was great with it. Let me show you. What did I do with them? Somewhere I've got to. Oh, here they are. I'm behind you over here. These are those little petite toast. Can you see that? Look, oh, they're just, they're just great with snacks. You can put anything you want on them. And I keep these on hand all the time because I can always find a way of using them. This is what they look like. They just look like little pieces of toast. And that's what they are. They're not flavored with anything. They're just miniature toast. These are great to eat with your potato soup. Now what you eat as a side dish is up to you. I would probably say a good salad would work. But I can get by with nothing but the potato soup and my crackers or my toast. So I wanted you to see what I had done. Now what I can do, I had that fifth potato. I can take that potato. It's still got part of the peeling on, but I can take that off. And all I have to do is just mash that up, add it to the potato soup. Just gives you a little more. You, you can mash them in a dish, which is really what I would recommend and what I'm doing. I'm doing this for convenience. So anyway, you can take that extra potato. And what I also did I just happened to have some leftover mashed potatoes. Had about a cup and a half. So I took those mashed potatoes. They'd been mashed up good. They didn't have any lump. I just dumped those right into my potato soup. And I had a thicker soup. Now if you want it thinner, Add more milk. If you like it thick, like I've got here, I like looking at it, because I know it tastes good. And I can't wait to sit down with my Dr. Pepper, my little toast, and my potato soup. And I'm thinking I'm going to add some of these bacon bits to my soup. So, you like me in the kitchen? That's what you get today. Homemade baked 
potato soup. Don't forget to put the cream of chicken soup in it. You can use 2% milk, half and half, whatever other kind of milk, whole milk, whatever you want. Just depends on how thick you want your soup to be. And I'm more than happy with this soup. I know I'm going to be making it more often. I'm not going to be throwing away potatoes anymore. I'm going to have good potato soup that'll last several days and years. See, I could put these onions right in there and let it simmer. That would be fine. But I kind of like the idea of the onions in the uh, melted butter. Get Let them cook a little bit. They don't have to be cooked a lot. Just let them cook a little bit before you start adding your flour to your roux. And that's what you got. I'm going to put the lid back on this. And in a few minutes, I'm coming back for something to drink. My potato soup. And I'm going to tell you how good it is. I already know how good it is. I just want you to know that... Uh, I, I did a good job this time. In fact, I'm going to take a big quart jar down to the doorman. He's such a jewel. And I'm going to give it to him to take home for supper. Every now and then I do that if I'm making something, especially soups, because they go a long way. And I always give him enough soup for him and his wife for supper. So, I'm going to be doing that later before he leaves. He leaves at six o'clock, so I've got to get things going, and he's always so appreciative of uh, the things I give him, and it makes me feel good that he wants to take the food home with him and share it with his wife. Now, I'm going to finish with this. Today, I put on two videos. They were five and six minutes each. But I just happened to run across them in my photograph album. I said, I thought I had deleted all of these little short stories. But I discovered these two and I thought, you know, I think my audience might like these two little stories. They're things that happened when I was a child. One of them was. The other one was on the Queen Elizabeth II ship. Oh boy, was that a dandy. So I added those today. You be sure and watch them. I think you will enjoy them. It'll give you a laugh. I hope it gives you a laugh. That was my intention. So I'm going to go now. Can't think of anything I need to add. Have you looked at my... Uh, Etsy items. Jessica's taking care of the Etsy website of the t-shirts and the sweatshirts, the apron, the mugs, all that stuff. Take a look. You can find it on Etsy. It's Chit Chat Granny Pat. So, anyway, um, that's all I have to say for today. You have a good day. Finish it up with a big bowl of potato soup. Thank you.